Elgin 4M models. 4M H Broombeer. 4M F Eagle. 4M W Road Wizard. Elevator removal and rebuild. My name is Kerry Alcott. Stop. Safety first. Make sure the hopper is empty before tilting the hopper completely. Danger. Falling hopper can cause severe injury or death. Safety supports must be in place before going under the hopper. Install hopper safety support. Caution. Use caution when standing or climbing onto the truck frame. Do not step on the side gutter broom disc. To remove the elevator from the machine, do the following. Raise the hopper and put the safety prop in place. Remove hopper box as suggested to allow more working room. Placing a 4x8 piece of plywood on top of the scissor lift makes a nice working platform. Make sure that it is suitable to handle the weight. Remove the rear broom, curtain, crossbar, and cover. Remove three bolts on the left side stub shaft triangular flange. Remove two of the three bolts on the right side bearing flange mounting plate. Turn the chassis key on but do not start the engine. Put in sweep mode and turn the main broom switch on. Remove the last bearing plate bolt and pull the broom from under the sweeper. Elevator housing removal. Raise rear truck wheels and put on stands or work platforms at least 12 inches high. Remove elevator drive motor. Remove motor coupler bolt and slide motor off shaft. Lay motor to one side. The upper shaft grease lines are secured to the elevator. It's easier to unbolt the grease fitting mounting bracket and remove the lines with the elevator. On both sides, remove the four bolts that close the bottom of the roller channel. Remove both stop pins. Turn the key on and put the sweeper in sweep mode and the main broom on without engine running will allow the elevator to lower. Doing this will get the hydraulic cylinder down out of the way. Slings can go through a hole in the upper cover of the elevator and attach to the upper shaft. Support the elevator at the upper shaft with an overhead hoist. If an A-frame is used, secure an A-frame with chains to the front axle of the truck on both sides so the A-frame does not move when lowering or raising the elevator. The hoist chain will be at a slight angle when the elevator is on the ground. Remove the clevis pin from the hydraulic cylinder. Remove the retaining pins from the crossbar on both sides. Lift the hoist to clear the elevator from the crossbar. Roll the crossbar out the bottom of the channels to get it out of the way. At the bottom of the elevator, place a set of low profile wheel dollies. Lower the hoist and work the bottom of the elevator out the back of the machine. There is a rubber curtain in this location held on by an angle iron. We found that using a forklift to pull the elevator would cause the middle of the elevator to raise and the elevator would hang up on the curtain angle iron. Using the forklift to limit how fast the elevator comes out of the machine will allow the top to lower and the middle to clear the angle iron. The upper shaft of the elevator, where the motor attaches, might be tight getting past the main broom arm support bracket. Loosening the mounting bolts should allow the bracket to move enough to get the shaft to pass. To install, reverse the procedure. Notice, when installing the elevator hydraulic drive motor, make sure that the clamping bolt is tightened securely. 
Squeegee Elevator Rebuild Replacing Elevator Flights and Chains The elevator flight chains should be replaced when the chains cannot be adjusted properly. This is determined by the distance from the center line of the bottom shaft to the top shaft center line and from side to side. The difference in measurement cannot be greater than 3 eighths of an inch. To get longer life from a set of chains, the right chain will stretch faster than the left. You can swap from side to side. Shortening the chains and putting in a half link. There are a few different ways to disassemble and reassemble the flights and chains. You can assemble in the machine or on the ground. It will depend on the lifting equipment you have available. In either way you do it, you must take extreme care so no injury will occur. The flights and chains, as an assembly, is very heavy. If you work from the bottom of the elevator and split the chains, keep in mind that there's nothing to keep the chains and flights from crashing down on you. Always secure the load. Preparation Park the machine on level ground. Chalk wheels Raise hopper. Put safety props in place. Have all safety gear in place. Safety glasses. Cutting torch glasses. Fire extinguisher. Welding gloves. Cutting torch leathers. Disassembly. Remove the main broom. Release the grease from the upper shaft cylinder adjusters, both sides, by first putting on safety glasses, then cleaning all the dirt away from around the button. Slowly remove the button. Be aware that the grease inside will exit very fast, so be prepared for the upper shaft to drop and to catch the grease. Clean up any grease and dispose of properly. Working from the bottom can be easier, but first secure the load. Take a 3 8 to a half inch safety chain and wrap it around two flights and the lower shaft and secure with a bolt. Now split the chain between those two flights. Split the chains. By removing a link pin or using a cutting torch and cutting a link. If the chains are to be replaced, it's easier to cut with a torch. Removing a pin could take some work because the weight against the pin or the pin could be grooved from wear. To remove a pin, take the carter pin out of the end of the link pin and with a hammer and a punch, drive the pin out. Before cutting the chains, put on safety gear. You will need a fire extinguisher, welding gloves, eye protection, and welding leathers. Cut the link sides of the chain. Take a forklift with a pull chain on the upper flight shown and pull the chain flight assembly out of the unit. Shavs, sprockets, and bearings. The bearings have two set screws that dig into the shaft, making a dimple. Pulling the rest of the bearing over the dimples can cause the bearing to seize onto the shaft. First loosen all the set screws on both bearings. If possible, push the shaft in a little so you can deburr and clean the opposite side. Then pull the bearing off and repeat for the other side. Reassembly Shavs the lower shaft has no keyway cut into it. What determines the replacement of an old shaft? Damaged bearing area where the bearing had seized or spun on the shaft. The sprocket flange bolt holes egg-shaped, shaft broken, twisted, or bent. If your old shaft is good, reuse it. Polish the bearing area with emery cloth. Whether used or new, there should be no rust, nicks, or burrs. High spots will cause the bearing to seize onto the shaft. Next, put the sprocket on the shaft. Notice the sprocket is cut. 
This allows changing the sprocket in the unit without removing the shaft. The sprocket has sleeves that push into the bolt holes and a retainer plate. Once the sprocket is on the shaft, push the sleeves into all seven holes and slide the retainer plate on the end of the shaft. Install the seven bolts and use nylock locking nuts. Notice the hole pattern and align the bolt holes. The split goes into this hole. Torque the nuts and bolts to 30 foot pounds. On the right side of the lower shaft is where the idler goes. Notice the bolt hole pattern is not the same as the sprocket and does not matter. Install six bolt hole sleeves, washers, and nylocks. Torque the nuts and bolts to 30 foot pounds. Place the shaft in the elevator housing. Put anti seize on the bearing area of the shaft and the mounting studs. Slide the dirt shield and bearings on both sides and hold in place with the nuts and washers, but just snug. We will be tightening these nuts later when adjusting the shaft height. Before you install the chains and the flights, the shafts have to be centered in the elevator housing. The distance from the inside of the elevator housing to the edge of the sprocket is to be equal on both sides. Flights can be purchased pre-assembled or you can get the rubber strips and do the labor. When you install the chains, make sure the flight link is in the correct direction. The link should push the flight, not pull. Clean and replace the grease button fitting into the upper shaft flight chain adjuster cylinders. Apply grease with a hand grease gun a few pumps at a time from side to side. Until the clearance of the sag is 3 to 4 inches. Do not over tighten. The last adjustment we need to make is the flight entry into and exit from the belly pan. With the flight directly under or between the shaft and the belly pan, there should be 1 16th to 1 8th inch clearance. Anything less will force the flight between the floor and the shaft, putting load on the system, and you'll hear a thumping noise.